Hello everybody, it's Dr. Rick. Uh, another episode of Riding with Rick. Uh, a new thing we're going to do while I'm doing my thing in the truck. Uh, we're going to do current events, uh, things that are in the news, things that are a part of public discussion, uh, and try to make sense of it uh, from a perspective of where we are as a people. Um, always remember uh, that the Odyssey Project, me, uh, and the work that we do is in need of your support. So, as always, if you believe in the work we do, uh, if you follow me for the years that I've been online and those who have rolled with me before that, uh, if you believe in what we do, look in the description box and uh, determine the way you want to give. There are several different options, uh, but we need your support. Today, we're going to talk about Tory Lanes and the 10 year sentence he was given uh, by a judge I want to believe on Monday um, for ultimately the incident surrounding the shooting of uh, Meg Meg the Stallion uh, I believe he shot her in the foot or in the ankle or something like that uh, in, in, uh, at the lower, bottom of the lower extremity and uh, it took a long time coming, and it's been a whole lot of jabber about it. Uh, and the first thing that I am going to say is we're having this discussion solely because we're enamored with the lives of celebrities and the level of value we give to the lives of celebrities puts us in a situation where we're always discussing uh, giving them passes that we would likely not give other people. Um, and I think that we need to see the value in every person so that we understand when that person is wrong, then there is something that needs to be done about it. In this case, one celebrity shoots another celebrity and people are literally discussing is 10 years too much um, there are so many different angles that I can take at this the first thing I'm going to talk about is he was a felon in possession of a firearm when you are a felon one of the things that they warn you about before you're released or before you are finally adjudicated and you have that felony is that it is illegal for you to be in possession of a firearm. It's like that on most state levels, but it's federal. So even if a state doesn't pick it up, the feds can still pick it up. They rarely will unless there's really something going on with it. In this instance, he was a felon in, in, in possession of a firearm in a state where it is necessary for people to register their firearms the firearm he had wasn't registered. And so he's eight of those years, he's got two four year sentences just with the gun. And so the other two years are for the assault. Let that register. They were more concerned with him. Now, this is again California. They're more concerned with him being in possession of the gun than they are or were. Or the judge and whether you know how much harm he caused the young lady he shot um, so my thing is I'm not a believer in throwing our people away I've said that before but I think that we all need to understand and it needs to be a world of consequences um, you know sometimes you make a calculated decision that you know I know I'm a felon but I'm going to carry this firearm because I need protection. And I'm not going to argue against that. We're in a world where we do need protection, but you have to understand first and foremost that if you get caught with that gun, there's a possibility that you can do time. You got to have that in your mind and say, well, I would rather be in a situation where I can defend myself and take this chance. And if it happens, it happens. Uh, and normally, uh, if you just get caught with it, you know, it's normally a slap on the wrist. 
they can give you federally easily 10 years for just being in possession of the firearm. Uh, each state is different, you know, two years or whatever. But for a federal offense, you can get to get them to 10 years. Uh, so that's the first thing is eight of those years, four for a felon in possession of a firearm, four for it, uh, being in a position of an unregistered weapon, and two for uh, assault. So that's the way it went down. So you have to look at it, how it was broken down. He could have gotten as much as 22 years and he was sentenced to 10. Um, and, you know, I heard some people saying, uh, that's that's a cakewalk. No, prison is no cakewalk. No matter how long you're there, uh, it totally. He, he wasn't in prison. He was on Rikers. He was in jail waiting. With Rikers, is like a damn prison. Yeah. Uh, but Khalif Browder is who I'm speaking of. Destroyed him. Ultimately, he killed himself. He never recovered from what he went through there. And the crazy thing about Khalif Browder is he wasn't guilty. Um, he actually was innocent but he got caught up in a system where they lost him in there and he was in there I think like three years for something he did not do and ultimately came out never pulled himself together went into a state of depression and killed himself um, because you don't know what happened to that kid while he was in there I can tell you Rikers is not a place that you want to be and very few prisons are you know, you got some light low units where they're putting the, the non-bad actors, but it's still a prison. And there's so many of their effort elements and components that go with that. And here's the thing. This is the thing that I, we, our young men should be thinking about before they act is that you're about to give up your freedom. You're about to go from being able to decide when and where you want to do something to have someone decide all of that for you. And everything else that goes along with that. Um, but I think that we need to get to the point where we're no longer enamored with celebrities to the point to where we're having these discussions, to where we are actually thinking that a person who takes an illegal firearm and shoots another person is being over uh, adjudicated or sentenced too harshly for getting 10 years. Um, you know, I think that we think because it's celebrity that it's not as real if it were to happen to our sister or our daughter or whatever. It's like, you know, you know, that's what they do. They do stupid stuff like that. Let them do what they do. No, everybody needs to be held accountable. Nobody should be beyond accountability. Uh, and it, it, to me, it's not just about whether they broke the law because it's a bunch of laws that don't benefit us. It's about just knowing what's humanly right and doing what's humanly right. That's what it's about. It's about doing what's right. And as a young black male, the last thing I want to see is you harming a, a, a black female. I definitely don't want you seeing, seeing you firing a gun. Well, it was an accident. Well, let's talk about the accident thing. Then I'm going to shut this down. Let's talk about the accident thing. You don't, anybody who handles a firearm, number one, you never point a gun in the direction of something you're not tend, intending to shoot. Uh, if you grew up in the hood, you understand, you never pull that thing unless you're intending on using it. You never point it at anything you're not intending on shooting. It's just the basic rules of handling a firearm. You can't shoot somebody if you're not aiming a weapon at them. If you're aiming a weapon at them, they have to be a threat. You don't point a gun to warn. You don't point a gun to scare. You don't point a gun. When you pull it, the intention is to neutralize a threat. Anything other than that is foolish and unnecessary, and it's probably going to end bad, and probably for more than one person. And, you know, uh, I grew up around gunplay. I grew up uh, around this mess. I have, you know, seen it all. And, and if you follow me, you know, I was in the middle of one, a, a, a shooting, what, a, yesterday, made two weeks, uh, two weeks ago. Uh, new neighbors acting up, invite some uh, hostile players over to pull up. Those dudes pulled up, get into a fight with my young neighbor, a 
15 years old, 17 year olds, uh, and and they shoot my neighbor twice, shoot my truck. You know, I could have been hit because I'm not there trying to stop it. Um, before the stuff pops off, you know, I'm out there trying to stop it. They get hostile, dude pulls gun, starts shooting, and don't stop till the gun goes empty. He's running, and so his aim is all over the place. That's how my truck got shot. Uh, fortunately, I wasn't hit, but my neighbor was hit twice. Stupid. Behind stupid stuff. Decisions made, lives changed forever. And so to me, it doesn't matter if it's the 15-year-old neighbor and his and his perceived enemy down, down the street, wherever. It doesn't matter um, if it's Tory Lanez and Meg the Stallion. Stop harming one another. Stop doing stupid shit. You'll stop getting stupid rewards or consequences. Um, you know, fortunately, he's young enough that by the time he pulls this in, uh, and more than likely he's going to parole early, uh, what he goes through when he's in there is going to be determined, you know, where they place him and, you know, what's going on, you know. Uh, it can go a couple of different ways. I'm not going to get into what could happen. Uh, because it would be all speculation, but it's a, it can go a lot of different ways. His celebrity could save him or a celebrity could cost him a lot of hurt. And it all depends. You know, it all depends also on who he clicks up with when he gets in there. He clicks up with the wrong people. It didn't bring him nothing but horror and pain because it's just going to bring drama. He clicks up with the right people that will keep him straight, keep him out of trouble, teach him how to keep his mouth closed, stay out the way. Uh, he can he can get through it, uh, but the thing is, you have to be accountable for your decisions. And I don't care what she does. Keep your hand off that black woman. If she got a mouth on her, if she don't know how to act, if she's violent herself, you don't need to be around her. Give her her space. Let her do her. You know, I don't care how bad she is. I don't care how fly, fine, famous or whatever. If And I'm not saying this is what Meg was. I don't know. I don't know the whole story because I didn't chase the story. I just know they were in a car together. Shit got kind of hectic. She got out the car and he shot her. Something about, and I don't know how true it is, told her to dance or whatever. You know, which tells me more than likely he wasn't, just himself he was inebriated and some kind of way whether he was high or drunk he was inebriated and it ultimately led to an even stupider decision than he would probably make normally and so here we are getting that stupid reward and the thing is to learn from it we make stupid decisions that's the one thing i'm gonna end it with we make stupid decisions you know uh some of us our stupid decisions didn't end us up in jail. Some of us it did. Some of us it ended up us in a world of hurt in other different ways. Uh, but the thing is, is to apply grace, but also be fair and understand that consequences is probably going to build the best character. If we keep giving people passes, they keep doing stupid stuff. Man, you know, I wonder what will would have happened if somebody in in Kale's camp would have pulled his coattail a long time ago and said, hey, look, man, I can't let that go. I'm going to have to tell somebody what you're doing and, and, and say, I'm not doing it because I hate you. I'm doing it because I love you. But this is absolutely wrong. And it happened 25 years ago instead of just recently. You know, he, he does what he has to do. He gets held accountable. He does what he has to do. And maybe he gets help. Maybe things happen. And maybe he's still able to bless us with some of the most unbelievable music possible. But his genius does not um, exempt him from accountability. And I think that's the thing we got to get away from. That because these people entertain us, because these people give us a sense of escapism and take us away from the realities of what we deal with, that because of that, they deserve a pass. No, they should be held to a higher standard because number one is because of what they do, they get a lifestyle that the average person doesn't live. That's accountability that goes with that, whether they want to admit it or not. They can say they're not role models, but the people who are watching them are modeling them. And so that is important. So yeah, 
we they need to be held to a high level of accountability because what we are seeing we are mimicking especially our youth so on that note i'm going to get off of here get back to work but i was out moving around and say man I, i'm gonna need to address this tory lanes thing anyway sometime today so i decided to go ahead and do it this morning uh, another segment of riding with Rick again if you believe in the work that we're doing outside of talking about stuff like this which is a small part of what we do uh, if you believe in the work we do in the community if you know you know if you're not if you don't there's a link to the organization's website in that description box as well check us out but if you believe if you follow you know what I do and what I've done for years show some love show some support uh, look in the description box on that note I'm out of here you guys have an unbelievable remainder of your day